Greetings, viewers! I come before you as a member of Hattori Hanzo and the Ninjas, wherein I am known as Satori, the Soul Seer. Today, I would like to teach you about the design of a ninja sword. Ninja often use swords that are quite different from the standard swords used by samurai. Let us first discuss the terminology. In Japanese, the general word for sword is katana. And in the Sengoku and Edo periods of Japan's history, this term katana referred to the standard sword used by samurai foot soldiers. Then we have the sword used by ninja, which in Japanese is often called shinobi katana or ninja to. Ninja to is quicker and easier to pronounce, therefore today I will be using the term ninja to. Now let us compare the two swords. As you may notice, the ninja to is shorter than the regular katana. Tis a matter of how and where a ninja intends to use his sword. You see, while samurai are soldiers who mainly use their swords out on the battlefield, a ninja is much more inclined to sneak about indoors and in narrow spaces. If you ever have a chance to visit a Japanese building, particularly one that was built long ago, you may find that the ceiling and doorways are lower than what you are used to. And ninja houses were often built with ceilings that were even lower than the average building of those times. A ninja toe is designed to take advantage of these narrow spaces. Let us suppose that a ninja encounters an enemy while sneaking about indoors somewhere. Or perhaps the enemy discovers the ninja's identity and comes directly to the ninja's house to deal with him. Assuming that the enemy is a samurai, he would not be accustomed to fighting in narrow spaces. And therefore, as he goes to swing his katana, it is possible that it gets stuck on the low ceiling or the narrow walls. A ninja toe, in contrast, being much shorter, is easier to wield in close quarters and narrow spaces without getting stuck mid-attack on some inanimate object. This brings us to another difference between the katana and the ninja toe, the shape. Because samurai were trained for the battlefield where they would be facing an army of enemy soldiers, the ideal use for the katana was to quickly slash and slice through as many enemies as possible. For this purpose, katanas were forged to have a curved blade that would easily slide along the surface of their enemies, creating a quick, clean, and deadly cut. These types of attacks were made in large, sweeping motions, which made it difficult to fight in narrow spaces, as we just discussed. A ninja toe, on the other hand, is straight. This is because rather than facing many enemies out on the open battlefield, a ninja often only had a single target at a time. For example, it could be someone they intended to assassinate, or a castle guard. For this reason, rather than consecutive slashing attacks, a ninja often needed only to make one single, precise, stabbing motion through one of his enemy's vital spots. While slicing attacks are much easier with a curved blade, a pinpoint stabbing attack will pierce through the enemy much easier with a straight blade. However, the straight design of the ninja toe has another important use as well. During infiltration missions, we ninja occasionally have to climb on top of rooftops or defensive walls or what have you. For such a task, we can use the hilt of the ninja toe as a platform to step on as we are climbing up. With this goal in mind, a straight sword provides much more stability and support than a curved sword. Furthermore, Note the difference between these two hilts. The katana has a round hilt, while the ninja toe has a square hilt. This straight edge provides stability, as the ninja toe is leaned up against a wall, with the intention of stepping on the hilt to climb up. But Satori, if you use your sword as a stepping stool to hoist yourself up onto some rooftop, then how will you recover your precious weapon? You wouldn't just... Leave it behind, would you? Thank you for asking. Perhaps you noticed that the ninja toe has a string tied to the sheath. A ninja can put one end of the string in his mouth while keeping the other end tied to the ninja toe. Then, after hoisting himself up, he uses the string to pull the sword up after him, making sure that he does not have to abandon his precious blade. Perhaps you noticed 
that the katana has a string tied to it as well. This is because I happen to be borrowing this katana from my ninja companion, Sanpei. He prefers to keep handy both a ninja toe and a regular katana. And he keeps a string tied to his regular katana as well. His favorite color is yellow, if you couldn't tell. Because this string has numerous uses besides just drawing your sword up after you've used it as a climbing tool. But alas, those other uses are a topic for another time. What say you, dear viewers? Let us know what you think about the ninja toe and the katana in the comments down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow for more ninja content. And if it suits your fancy, please feast your eyes on our other social media platforms as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. As always, thank you for watching. And until next time, I bid you a very warm farewell. Dorong.